Hi everyone. So this is the recording of the lecture on Housing Development Control and Licensing Act 1966, which is the part two of HDA. Okay. As uh, we um, did earlier last week, we did the part one um, until the case of Hariran Jairam, which was um, we, uh, at the end of last week's lecture, we discussed uh, about the case laws re uh, related to HDA. So this week, okay, the part two of HDA, uh, we are going to discuss two things. Okay, two things, which is the first one, I'm going to discuss about uh, vacant possession, uh, which will include the definition of vacant possession, control over vacant possession, the timing of vacant possession delivery, and finally, the manner of vacant possession delivery. The manner means how uh, uh, vacant possession is um, affected. Uh, is affected. And the second part of the lecture is we are going to proceed and talk about the Home Buyers Claims Tribunal. Uh, in Malay, it's known as Tribunal Tuntutan Pembeli Rumah, TPTR. We are going to discuss about the function of the um, Home Buyers Claims Tribunal, its jurisdiction, okay, and uh, you will see um, that the TTPR, the Home, Home Buyers Claims Tribunal, jurisdiction will be uh, divided into a few categories, huh? uh, not just the uh, scope of the tribunal, meaning the subject matter of the tribunal. And then finally, procedures uh, of the Home Buyers Claims Tribunal, how you can make claims, uh, what about counterclaims and things like that, and what kind of forms you need to fill in and things like that. Okay, so we'll proceed with the first part of the lecture, which is the vacant possession. We'd like to show you uh, the housing development uh, process in Malaysia, okay, which uh, essentially everybody knows you must start with the land, right? So the land is no, uh, so the, the, the uh, preparation of the site uh, or the, the identification of the site is known as site, uh, uh, is known as land assembly, uh, whereby you identify a suitable um, site, uh, whether it's a parcel or a number of uh, land parcels, uh, you assemble the site. Uh, uh, then you go and appoint, uh, um, appoint the consultants, uh, appoint or liaise with the consultant, liaise with the consultants. Uh, then you do the necessary applications, and we learned before uh, in our um, in our in the earlier part of this course uh, during our lecture on uh, SDBA. Okay. Uh, that the application for uh, building plan uh, approval, you we go to OSC, correct? Uh, this is together with other applications such as the planning commission. Okay, so you can see there application for the proposed development. Okay, uh, is done via the one-stop center. Okay, and within the one-stop center, okay, the uh, the approval will be given by the different different departments. Huh? Some examples of the departments that you can see here: the land office for the land matters. The local authorities planning department for the planning permission or development order and then the building department for the building plan approval engineering department for all the mechanicals or the apa nama tu, uh, electrical punya plans uh, on the uh, in the buildings okay and then the technical departments for all other uh, approvals such as the did yeah, such as the what else the storage yeah, department and all the technical departments Okay, and then finally, results will be out. Okay, on the on the application, whether approve or to reject or to approve with conditions. You can see here. Okay, all the approvals, uh, approval uh, process. Okay, we have learned this before. I'm not going to elaborate. But after that, you can see here this one, the construction stage. Uh, uh, const sorry, uh, construction stage. Okay. Um, which is um, stated that there is a, um, what we call a statutory statutory period uh, for the uh, for the units for the residential units to be completed. I'm not talking about the residential development in Malaysia. Okay, not for other types of developments because we are now learning the Housing Development Act. Right now, for the construction, okay, there's a fixed time period. Okay, uh, for landed properties. 
that's 24 months eh, after the signing of the state of purchase agreement and also for the uh, strata uh, residential, uh, residential properties, 36 months. Uh, this is the point okay, during the construction stage. It's the point when for the uh, strata properties, you apply for um, strata title application, uh, application for subdivided building. Okay, we have learned this at what stage? Uh, we have learned before. This is done at the superstructure stage, uh, when the superstructure stage has been certified uh, by the, uh, by the, apa nama tu? Um, PSP. And then we have uh, upon completion, issuance of certificate of completion and compliance. Okay, the steps of which we have learned before uh, earlier on in this course. Uh, we have the 21 forms. Uh, remember from G1, G2, G3 until G21, and then immediately after that, what comes out? Uh, form F, then uh, form F which is the, uh, the architect certification that the building has been completed in accordance with the laws and according with the approved um, building plan scan. Uh, so, and after that, what happens is what we are going to learn tonight. Uh, uh, we are going to learn uh, um, the delivery of vacant possession of the completed building. And you can see the order here, the CCC must be um, must be issued first before the building can be delivered. Uh, delivered by the vendor to the purchaser. The vendor refers to the, 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 the um, developer. Okay? The purchaser is the home buyer in this case. Huh? So strictly it's, uh, this um, process or this um, diagram refers to the housing development uh, process in Malaysia. Okay? And we can see there in the bracket, it shows that which is what we I'm going to elaborate in this lecture, the defect liability period. Okay, defect liability period, which used to be once upon a time, it used to be 12 months, then it was extended to 18 months. Now, finally, uh, the latest defect liability period is within 24 months of the, of the date of the delivery of vacant possession. Now, vacant possession, we are going to learn in detail in this lecture, the last stage uh, of the housing development process. Uh, this is the process when the finished product product uh, is, be, um, is transferred or is, um, up in a, is given uh, to the uh, cons uh, consumer or the purchaser uh, the final stage. Now at the end of this lecture you'll be able to explain the definition of vacant possession. So in this case uh, I have shortened vacant possession to VP. The control over VP, the control here means um, which parts of the uh, Housing Development Act uh, controls the vacant possession process. Uh, process the um, the manner, uh, charu, the manner of which vacant possession is delivered. Uh, what happens is if, uh, if vacant possession is not delivered on time. Uh, so we call that the control, uh, the control, the, the provisions in the HDA that controls uh, vacant possession delivery. Then, uh, uh, then the timing of vacant possession delivery. When, when does vacant possession? When is vacant possession um, must be? When does the vacant possession must be delivered uh, to the uh, house buyer or the, to the home buyer? Uh, what's the timeline like? Uh, what's the time period like? So you want to know that. When we talk about time, we are talking about the statutory time. Uh, what's contained? in the statutory documents uh, dalam akta lah uh, ataupun dalam um, apa nama tu in um, in legal apa nama tu uh, not documents in the um, regulations or in the in this case schedules uh, schedules related to housing development act what's the timing uh, um, yang diletakkan yang ditentukan dalam the schedules so dalam jadual-jadual uh, um, related to uh, housing development act and finally, the manner, cara, uh, the manner of vacuum delivery. That, that, um, there are conditions that must be fulfilled. There are documents that also must be issued uh, during the delivery of the vacuum possession. So we want to know that. So first of all, the definition. Definition of vacuum possession. What is it? So in BM, it's known as milikan poso. So um, the way that we say how we give it to the purchaser then, we give it to the purchaser. We say it's delivered. Uh, 
diserahkan, serah milikan kosong. We don't call it pemilikan. Pemilikan is ownership, proprietorship. So possession is milikan. Okay, milikan. So vacant possession, milikan kosong. Bila kita nak beri, we want to give the milikan kosong, the, the, the vacant possession to the purchaser, we call, we deliver. We call it delivery. Delivery of vacant possession to the purchaser. Um, delivery lagi satu the uh, receipt lah the receipt of vacant possession ha? acceptance pun boleh juga ha? of vacant possession from the vendor ha? so, tapi normally we use this word lah delivery of vacant possession ha? uh, from the vendor slash developer to the purchaser slash buyer generally Ah, uh, generally this is the process of property handover. Ah, uh, kita panggil juga serah kunci. Ah, uh, when we uh, give the key to the homeowner, uh, to the home buyer, for the home buyer to enjoy the exclusive use uh, of the property. Ah, uh, vacant possession is a legal concept. Ah, uh, referring to the right of a purchaser to exclusive use of a property. T, either on completion of the sale where any previous occupant has moved out or, in, or on completion of a new property. Uh, so it's a legal concept. So when you make a possession, it's not a document. Uh, it's a legal concept. Satu concept, uh, satu bentuk abstract lah. Yang mana melibatkan, referring to the right of a purchaser to exclusive use of a property. Uh, yang mana melibatkan uh, hak hak seseorang pemilik untuk menikmati ya, secara eksklusif menikmati uh, dia, dia boleh exclude other people ha? so exclusive use for himself ha? of the property bila on the completion of the sale ha? ini untuk uh, sub sale lah untuk bangunan sedia ada for an existing residential unit okay it's new, it's on the completion of the sale okay when the previous occupant has moved out ha? bila orang yang tinggal tu telah Uh, pergi sebab bangunan dah siap pada existing okay so vacant possession is given when the house is empty lah uh, but uh, when we are talking about um, uh, another scenario uh, uh, in a new development we are talking about the completion of a new property uh, so dah ada dua lah dua, two situations there where, where vacant possession may be delivered but strictly for This particular um, lecture, we are talking about delivery of vacant possession for a new development. Satu, uh, apa, um, satu pembangunan yang baru. Okay. Now the control. Uh, now we are talking about the um, the, 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 the provisions uh, under uh, HTA uh, which, re, uh, which are related to uh, vacant possession. So details of the delivery. Of vacant possession are contained in Schedule G and Schedule H. Okay, um, you may remember that Schedule G and Schedule H are the standard sale and purchase agreements uh, that are contained at the back of the Housing Development Act. Okay, Schedule G is the SPA sale and purchase agreement for land and building for landed residential properties. Schedule H is the SPA for subdivided building for strata residents. Uh, so G and H comes up together kan? G dulu baru H. So G refers to SMP or SPA, SMP Chase Agreement for landed properties. Schedule H is the um, is the same purchase agreement SPA for subdivided building or strata properties. Okay. Now I will show you. Uh, we uh, will um, get out of this window just to show you. Okay. Uh, schedule G and Schedule H, yeah? sorry, Schedule G and Schedule H, where um, where uh, both of which I have uploaded on Spectrum. You can have a look. So this this is G, G, okay, G for see here, sale and purchase agreement, land and building, landed property. So I should uh, switch the the order lah. G first, okay, G, sale and purchase agreement, land and building, H. Sale and purchase agreement building intended for subdivision. Uh, subdivided building equals the strata um, residence lah, strata properties, strata um, residence. Okay. So now, 
the first part is all about the um, ident identifying the parties to the agreement. This is like a contract. Say and purchase agreement, agreement equals contract, right? So the first page identifies the vendor and the purchaser. Uh, the vendor to siapa? The, uh, normally the uh, developer. Lah, uh. So between the vendor and the purchaser, the name, uh, maybe if the if it's the company, the name of the company, NRIC, kalau ada IC, uh, if uh, there's an um, uh, identity, identity card, the national IC, but if it's a company, then the company registration number, lah, the company number. Okay, then the purchaser IC number here in after known as uh, da, 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 da. okay. So who are the parties to the um, agreement to the SPA uh, to the say purchase, purchase agreement? Okay, whereby the parties of this property, uh, the parties yang tengah sign uh, who are signing the um, uh, an agreement of the sale and purchase of this identified property. Uh, dia akan nyatakan what what are the uh, what's the lot number, the title number, the mukim, uh, the state where, uh, how how big, uh, the land area. Okay, some identification of the property uh, of the property, and then if there's any um, charge on the land, charge to who with its register office, di mana. Okay. Uh, the charge okay so those are all the initial the the, the identity of the one the, the vendor the purchaser two the identity of the um uh, of the the, the 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 property itself three the identity of interested parties uh, the charge and so on okay then only we go to one two three so in the schedule we don't call it section so in the schedule, this one schedule G, we call this number one to clause. Clause one, schedule G. Clause two, schedule G. Clause three and so forth. Uh, sometimes we call it sub, sub clause. Sub, sub clause two, one. Sub clause two, two. Sub clause two, three. Uh, so it's clause. Uh, clause, clause, clause di dalam jadual. Dia bukan section. Uh, dia bukan article juga. Article dalam perlembagaan kan? Okay, now. Uh, so first one, two, three is not what we want to. Uh, now, sorry, there is something uh, here uh, regarding uh, vacant possession. So in the lecture, we might we'll touch a little bit here. Ah, uh, and then the property must be free from encumbrances before the purchaser takes vacant possession of the said building. So ada lah. There is a mention that the property must be free from encumbrances before the vacant possession is delivered uh, to the purchaser or the purchaser takes vacant possession. Okay, so then we go to the purchase price is how much. This is very important. Okay, as you will see later on in our lecture, uh, the importance of this purchase price is when uh, uh, situation, uh, a, a delay, uh, when a delay uh, in the delivery of vacant possession occurs, uh, the ganti rugi, the award, uh, the compensation on the, um, on the on the late delivery or kita panggil uh, damages uh, the compensation to is general kan it's a general term but in this case it's known as damage lad uh, liquidator and ascertain damages lad uh, it will, will be based on this one the purchase price so, so the purchase price must be stated uh, clearly then the schedule of payments, schedule of payments as per the third schedule. Uh, for those who are not familiar, I will spend some time on this one. Okay. So third schedule, if you go at the end of the jadual of the of the schedule G and schedule H, you will find the third schedule. Okay. So the third schedule is schedule of payment. So if you buy a house which is under construction, the bank has to release according to the percentage of completion. So you can see here immediately upon the signing of this agreement, 10%. So that is the, the deposit that we're talking about, 10% deposit, kan? So this is the 10% to be paid uh, immediately upon the signing of this agreement, 10% deposit. And then if you can see one by one, uh, the items, the foundation completed, then you have to pay 10% more. The enforced concrete framework completed, then uh, the bank has to release 15% uh, of the purchase price to the developer and so on. Uh, you will see one by one, the enforced concrete framework completed, the walls have been completed and the uh, uh, door and window frames placed in position 10 more percent. 
the roofing, electrical wiring, plumbing, gas piping, and all the apa nama, pipes and cables huh, or the trunking have been um, completed 10 more percent to be released. Okay, internal and external plastering 10 percent, so rich works 5 percent, drains 5 percent, road serving the building 5 percent. Okay, then on the date huh, of the which is a tax vacant possession. So on the delivery of vacant possession date, uh, the date of vacant possession, 12.5%. Okay, 12.5%. And then within 21 days of uh, after receipt uh, purchaser of the purchaser solicitor of separate document of title, uh, when the title plus the uh, of the separate title of the state lot with valid and registrable, registrable memorandum of transfer executed, okay. Then 2.5%, whichever is later, 2.5 more percent on the date of purchaser takes vacant possession. Okay, uh, 5 more percent. But this one uh, will be um, simple, will be hold on, uh, will be held on by the solicitor. Uh, ini tak boleh bagi. The 5% will not be released. Uh, dia akan disimpan sebagai stake money. Uh, stakeholder, okay, which is the vendor solicitor, solicitor uh, peguam of the developer akan pegang the final 5%. So after the 95% has been uh, has been released by the bank, eh, by stages of completion, the 5% will be retained by the vendor's solicitor, eh, peguam uh, developer tu, dan dipegang untuk tujuan ini for the for the uh, for this particular period, the, the first six months, uh, 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 the first six months after the first six months, the the habis of the vacant possession, they release two point five percent. After the take possession eighteen months, release again two point five percent. The reason for this retention money, uh, di dipegang ni by the stakeholder, is to allow for any, uh, know, any claims on defect. Uh, ni defect liability period ni, ha, ni 18%, 18 months ni ke, sekarang 24. This must be an old, this must be an old agreement because this is supposed to be 28, uh, sorry 24, 24 months. Ha, pada akhir defect liability period which is 24 months after the vacant possession delivery, then the whole 100% will be released to the uh, developer. Ha, then the reason why the money is being held, ha, they uh, held back is because sekiranya other claims if there's any claim uh, by the home buyer uh, by the purchaser uh, on the building any defect and then we, we will learn about this uh, in the lecture any defect uh, on the um, on the um, on the uh, on the new uh, sorry on the property uh, they claim that the developer to repair developer doesn't repair then the um, the the purchaser can out of pocket uh, can repair himself and then deduct on this five percent. So again, if you see at uh, the order of the uh, stages, uh, it is really the stages of completion of the building. It starts from the foundation, then the concrete framework, then the walls one by one, right? Uh, the wall does yeah, the roof. When the roof is up, then the plastering. When the plastering has been completed, then the sewage. Then after after the sewage works has uh, has been completed, then the drains and then the roads and then finally vacant possession. Okay. Now all these the the, the final uh, the items three, four, five. Ni semua, um, what do you call it? Uh, legal legal matters lah on the uh, on the property. Okay. So basically, this is third schedule, the third schedule. Uh, we, I will refer back to the third schedule in our lecture uh, after this other juga. So I just want you to be aware that third schedule in the schedule G and schedule H. Similarly, we are not talking about G, right? H pun has got its own uh, third schedule. Same thing, sama juga. If I show you at the bottom, okay, schedule, uh, the third schedule, sorry, yeah, third schedule. Third schedule, same. Uh, third schedule, right? Same. Immediately upon signing, 10%. Okay. Then uh, foundation, 10%. Same. Same, 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 same. same. Okay. With the um, schedule G. So the difference between G and H is G is for landed property, uh, landed residential property. H is for um, strata, residential property. Okay. 
So just to show you again how many um, now the uh, comparing these two, okay, schedule H has more clauses than schedule G. So schedule G ends at clause number 20, 28, 29, 30, 32. Okay, it ends at number 32, clause 32. But if you can see, okay, H ends at clause number. Eh, some, no, uh, more, more. Clause number 35, 36, uh, clause number 36. So it has uh, four more clauses uh, than the schedule G. Okay. So these are the main differences between the two schedule, schedule G and schedule H, but the, dip, the, the similarity, the main similarity is both are the sale and purchase agreements for residential properties. Uh, okay, now we go back to our and our lecture, okay, our lecture just now, control the composition. So I've shown you just now, okay, schedule G and schedule H, whereby schedule G is the SPA for land and building, huh, for landed, build, uh, landed uh, residential property. Schedule H is the SPA for subdivided building or strata residential properties. Now, clause two, remember, it's called clause, huh? not article, not section, clause. Clause 2, as, as per what I showed you just now, it says property must be free from encumbrances before the purchaser takes possession of the building slash parcel. So building refers to the landed building, uh, landed property, parcel refers to the strata. Lah. Then clause 23 of Schedule G and clause 26 of Schedule H. Uh, per day, what is it? It's the timing. The timing, the time of the delivery of vacant possession. For landed properties, for land with building, it's 24 months uh, uh, from the date of the S uh, SPA. But for the subdivided building, uh, the delivery of vacant possession should be made within 36 months uh, of the date of the Sale and Purchase Agreement, SMP or SPA. Lah. We call it either SMP, Sale and Purchase or SPA, Sale and Purchase Agreement. Okay, so again, uh, for lender is 24 months from the date of signing. Uh, when, I, when, I, when we say the date of Sale and Purchase Agreement is the date of signature, the, when you sign, bila disahkan, what's the stamping? Uh, that is the date of Sale and Purchase Agreement. Now, for landed, 24 months from the date of signing of SPA, for strata, 36 months. So, for, its, for instance, uh, uh, the SPA date uh, for landed, for a landed property is one, uh, 1st July 2016. So, you calculate 24 months is 2 years, right? 2016 plus 2, 2018. But, notice the date. See the date. If you sign on 1st of July, okay, the last date uh, when the property must be delivered on, on that day itself, uh, 30th to is on the day itself, 30th. The, the delivery must be done on or before 30th of June 2018. It's not 1st of July, bukan? it's the day before. That's the end of the 24 months. For strata, okay, if you sign on 1st of July 2016, 36 months, you plus 3 years, so 2016 becomes 2019. Again, the month or the date, the date okay, is one day earlier huh, than the date you sign. Okay? So the statutory date, this one, the statutory, also known as statutory date of vacant possession delivery. Huh, sebab mengikut statute, mengikut undang-undang. Huh, date yang mengikut undang-undang untuk di uh, diberi, uh, di, diserah milik kosong tu is 30, uh, 30th of uh, June 2016. Uh. The statutory date of vacant possession delivery is also known as completion date. Uh, so if you see any reference to completion date, uh, bila dia cakap pasal vacant possession, we are not talking about the date of the completion of the building. Bukan? We are talking about the concept tu. Uh, the, completion, the, the completion of the time. Uh, completion of the time whereby vacant possession must be delivered, which is 24 months for landed uh, properties or landed residents, uh, 36 months for uh, strata properties or strata residents. 
Next, uh, the timing. Again, we go back to clause 23 for schedule G, clause 26 for schedule H. Time is of the essence. Sangat penting. Uh, when, we, when we talk about essence, dia sangat uh, penting. Dia, dia, dia merupakan uh, sesuatu yang beri tona, lah, yang memberi uh, makna kepada kontrak tersebut. So, time is of the essence of the for the delivery of vacant possession sangat sangat penting uh, so even sehari lambat pun sudah kira late delivery okay so time is of the essence even if you uh, deliver one day late it's considered late delivery okay there is uh, implication lah uh, of late delivery if the vendor fails to deliver vacant possession on time and uh, uh, apa nama, and in the stipulated manner uh, apa yang jadi kalau gagal untuk deliver on time dan juga menggunakan cara, dan mengikut cara yang telah ditetapkan uh, dalam clause untuk shadow G clause 24 untuk shadow H clause 27 uh, the, the coming one the one after that the manner of um, the manner of delivery is stated on the, in the clause coming after clause yang stated above ah timing tu after timing is deliver uh, after timing is manner okay cara so apa yang jadi is the vendor is liable to pay the purchaser liquidated damages okay compensation just now denda kan liquidated damages uh, ganti rugi bukan denda ganti rugi calculated from day to day at the rate of 10% per annum of the purchase price from the expiry date of the delivery of vacant possession so again what is this the expiry date is the date when the purchaser is supposed to get possession kalau uh, you sign 197 uh, untuk landed you're supposed to get that two years after that uh, 1110 kan so you're supposed to get that 30th September uh, 2012 two years 24 months Okay. So from the expiry date of calculated from and until from the expiry date of the delivery of vacant possession until the date the purchaser takes vacant possession the actual date bila kunci diserahkan kepada the purchaser until the date the purchaser takes vacant possession in terms of getting the keys to the property of the property meaning here for the landed property we we call it building for the strata we call it parcel. Yeah, so this particular paragraph yeah, uh, shows you the implication uh, of late delivery uh, whereby the vendor is liable, kena dia wajib bayar satu ganti rugi, uh, 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 what about, uh, damage which, which is known as liquidated damages. Okay? So what is liquidated damages uh, in the context of late delivery is also known as LAD. Okay. Liquidated and ascertained damages. Ha, liquidated ni sudah cash lah, ha, bayaran lah, bayaran ascertained sudah dikira tau, ha, bayaran sudah dikira. So LAD is a genuine pre-estimate before the situation happens, ha, before the late delivery happens. You anticipate that the situation might happen. So what you do is in the contract, in the sale and purchase agreement, you say, you, you stipulate that sekiranya ini berlaku, you kena bayar so much, so much, so much. And in the schedule G and schedule H, the LAD has been, the cara, the, the, the manner of calculation or the method of calculation has been set. Uh, you tak boleh, you cannot simply make another contract uh, uh, to calculate uh, to, 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 apa, to amend the calculation or, or the method of calculation of the LAD. So what is it? It's a genuine pre-estimate of the loss that will be caused to one party in a situation where the contract is broken by the other. So this is the generic, uh, any general definition of LAD. So LAD is not just something that you find in um, apa nama, Shadow G, Shadow H, uh, which is the statutory purchase agreement, bukan? All contracts pun ada this provision, eh? especially construction contracts lah. Sebab kalau lambat saja, there will be losses kan to be borne eh? by the by the apa nama tu by the owner sekali lambat. So you must calculate eh? the ganti rugi, the, the damages that must be paid eh? to the party who suffered the loss lah, eh? suffered the loss. So in this case, 
uh, dikira kontrak tu dah broken, uh, sudah so berlaku breach di situ. Uh, kalau you langgar kontrak, you have to pay damages. So what what's the amount of damages? We we agree from the beginning. Uh, this is the formula. Okay, so LAD is actually a formula that both party are aware, both parties are aware are aware of, and both parties agree from the beginning when they sign the contract. Okay, so Schedule G and H contain provisions on LED that is to cover what happens in the event of, a de of the delay, who can claim, how to calculate uh, the, me the method or the formula of calculation, what happens if LED is not paid. Semua itulah. Okay. So, contained by, uh, contained in Schedule G and Schedule H. So, this is an example of calculation of LED on late delivery. For instance, uh, say for a new strata project. Uh, the sale and purchase agreement date on one particular parcel is 1st of July 2016. The purchase price is stated at 100,000 ringgit. The statutory date of vacant possession delivery, if you calculate, okay, for the strata is 36 months, kan? Uh, so, 1 over uh, 1st July, now the date is 30th June, okay, one day before, okay. Then 2016, you plus 3 years, 2019. Uh, this is also known as completion date. Now, what happens in actual uh, in reality was the actual delivery of vacant possession was only delivered uh, was only uh, only occurs uh, only occurs thirty first August two zero one eight. So you can see here there's a late delivery. Okay, supposed to you supposed to uh, you you're supposed to get uh, your vacant possession on thirtieth of June twenty nineteen, but you only got. Uh, your um, kunci, your, your vacant possession on 31st of August 2019. So how do you calculate the days of delay from 30th of June okay, to 31st of August of the same year? Okay, So you calculate from this day itself. 30th to dah kira sehari. So you have Okay, you have the year, the year kiranya first kan, first of July, first July, first July, first August, so the whole of July, the whole of August, okay, um, 30, 30, but August has, uh, July and August has 31 days, huh? so 31, 31, jadi 62, plus 30th of June, 2016, another day, uh, because you're supposed to get your key on that day, that day will be calculated. Okay, the completion date will be calculated as well. So for the two months just now comprising um, 31 days, so 31 days times two plus one. So until you have 63 days. So how you calculate the purchase price which is 100,000 times the interest which is fixed at 10% per annum divided by 365 lah, per annum kan times 63 days, so you get 1,726. So this, this is the amount uh, to be paid by the vendor to the purchaser okay, as LAD, uh, liquidated and assessed damages. Okay, next, we're talking now about tribunal claim. Uh, we're talking about when this happens, kan, the late delivery to, or any other um, apa nama, claim, claimable matters that we will learn next week. Uh, so one of which, one of the claimable matters is late delivery lah. Uh, okay. So when, bila, be, when is the last date that you can file a claim uh, uh, to the um, to the house buyers claims tribunal in Malaysia lah. Uh, it says here the claim at the home buyers claims tribunal for late delivery of vacant possession must be done no later than 12 months from the date of CCC or the expiry date of the defect liability period. Uh, defect liability period is calculated, it runs from the date, uh, beginning from the date of the vacant possession delivery and 20 months after that. Uh, dalam masa 24 bulan, 24 months from the date of the vacant possession delivery, whichever earlier. Yang mana satu awal, lebih awal. Okay? So no later, tidak lebih, tidak, not more than 12 months daripada date of delivery or the expiry date of the defect liability period. Uh, 
Uh, so this is how you calculate. I give you an example below. Say the sale and purchase agreement date is 1st of July 2016. Okay, 1st of July 2016. Statutory date of the composition delivery or the completion date is 30th of June 2019. So this is a strata, lah. strata again, huh? 36 months. The CCC date, the actual date of the CCC is 31st of July 2019. So you can see here the CCC date is one month after the completion, completion date lah, kan? But the actual delivery of vacant possession is much later, 31st. Uh, dah lah ni lambat sepatutnya, in uh, reality, if you aim for completion date on the on 30th of June 2019, CCC should be uh, should be issued before the 30th of June uh, because a condition for vacant possession is CCC already issued. So, uh, in this case, there was a, a, a delay uh, in um, construction which caused the CCC only to be issued on 31st of um, July 2019 and the actual delivery of vacant possession on 31st um, August 2019. So, if we go on, if we calculate the 12 months from the date of CCC, okay, one here, one, 12 months from CCC date is this one, 31st July, kan? so you add 12 months here, you get 31st July 2020. So, if you go and calculate the second, uh, what the second condition, not condition, the second, um, Qualifier lah. This is the first qualifier. This is the second qualifier. Qualifier number one is um, is related to CCC. Qualifier number two is related to defect liability period expiry date. Okay, so CCC is um, uh, when you calculate the 12 months, you get 31st July 2020. Then the expiry date of the uh, defect liability period, which is 24 months uh, from the date of vacant possession delivery. So when was the vacant possession delivered? 31st August 2019. So the, the vacant possession, uh, sorry, the, the defect liability period is valid within 24 months. So you add two years there, 24 months there from this date, from the actual delivery, uh, actual delivery. So 31 August 2019 plus two years, plus 24 months here. So you get uh, 31st August 2021. Two years, can. So which one is earlier? This one is the number one is earlier, huh? which which comes in 2020. Huh? July 31st July 2020 is earlier than 31st August 2021. One is earlier. Therefore, the claim must be made before 31st July 2020. Huh? So you must claim for the uh, for the LAD just now. Okay. Uh, before this date, uh, before 30, uh, before 12, uh, before 31st July 2021. Otherwise, you may not uh, the, the the sorry the claim may not uh, be heard at the um, tribunal. Now, the manner of delivery of vacant possession, the method lah, bagaimana how huh? before can deliver before the vendor can deliver vacant possession, okay, according to clause 24, schedule G, uh, which um, rules the manner of delivery of vacant possession and also clause 27 uh, for schedule H, there are five conditions that must be fulfilled. Lima. First one is the vendor's architect has issued a certificate certifying that the construction of the building or parcel has been duly completed. Uh, if we recall what we have learned before, Okay, this certificate is related to UBBL. Okay, this actually refers to Form F. Uh, F. Uh, it should certificate certifying that the construction has been duly completed. Ini bukan, uh, this is not CCC. It needs to more certification by the, um, by the architect that the building has been completed according to the laws, according to the uh, approved building plan. That was the prerequisite for CCC, can remember? 
Then the second one is water and electricity supply are ready for connection to the said building or parcel. And ready for connection, meter sudah ada kat luar rumah, meter. Adakah, is, um, does that mean that the electricity and uh, water supply has flowed into the building? No, not, not necessarily. Uh, ready for connection sahaja. So that's the interpretation. You cannot interpret more than that. Uh, you cannot say, oh, maknanya dah ada. That, there should be water supply and electricity supply. supply. No, uh, that means ready for connection. Meter dah ada kat luar, kabel dah ada kat luar. It's just a matter of... Uh, calling, uh, apa nama, uh, 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 registering your account ataupun creating account with MD, with AIS Langor ke whatever syabas ke. Huh? So that's the responsibility of the, um, the connection itself is the, the, the responsibility of the owner of the purchaser. They can go and um, create their accounts huh, with the providers. Now, the third one, CCC has been issued on the building or parcel. So this comes after the certificate certifying the construction. So CCC has been issued. The purchaser has paid all money payable. Semua duit-duit tadi, okay, all the money payable as per schedule, uh, sorry, the third schedule uh, in both schedule G and schedule H. So more than 10%, pro, the all progress payments so has been released by the banks lah. Normally, you can cash kan, you can gunakan, finance kan. So the money has been released by the banks at 10%, 15%, 5%, 5%, 5% according to the third schedule. Okay, all money is payable in that and also any other payments, uh, any other um, apa nama tu, payments accrued ataupun payable yang perlu dibayar selain daripada third schedule. Contohnya, there could be administrative charges uh, by the developer that they that they have agreed before. So, they have to pay uh, for that one. The fifth one, the purchaser has performed and observed all the terms and covenants on his part under the sale purchase agreement. So, uh, terms and covenants yang terkandung dalam schedule G and schedule H. For instance, uh, uh, obtaining a loan, uh, obtaining, obtaining financing, that is the responsibility of the purchaser. So if he managed to get, then good luck, he has fulfilled his um, terms and covenants. But if not, then that means that he has not um, performed uh, what has been required of him in the schedule G or schedule H. So tak perlulah diberikan vacant possession sebab he has not fulfilled his end of the contract. So these are the five conditions before the vacant possession is delivered. What about the documents? There are two required documents. Huh? Uh, again, this is part of the manner. Uh, ini method juga lah. Selain daripada, besides fulfilling the five conditions, these are the two documents huh, that are required in uh, during the delivery of the vacant possession. The first one is a certificate signed by the vendors architect certifying that the said building has been duly constructed and completed in according uh, in number one tadi tu. Uh, basically must, the, the, the certificate itself must be delivered, must be given to the purchaser. Mesti ada pada masa itu and this is also known as form F of uh, build, uh, by law 25 UBBL. We have learned this before, uh, form F tu. Form F comes before the issuance of CCC. Now the second one, is under is actually under the old system whereby in the old system the building certification is done by the sorry the certification for the new building uh, that the building is safe for human habitation then uh, for occupation then uh, so that was the CFO system the certificate of fitness for occupation uh, so the uh, as I mentioned in class see under the old system CF the the, the certificate of fitness for occupation is ish, was issued by the local authority and it will only be issued upon application by the um, by the PSP by the architect lah of the development by the PSP PSP uh, by that time uh, by the architect in charge uh. so there must uh, in the old days uh, in the old system okay uh, the delivery of vacant possession without CCC kan pada masa tu uh, there must be proof that CFO has already been applied for and the issuance to is not it's not within the the hands of the of the what do you call it of the architects kan? uh, but then again 
there must be proof that CFO has already been applied for uh, in the old system. Saja. So essentially for, for, for current um, vacant possession, this form F must be delivered, must be given together with the keys. And if you go back to your lectures, you also find that there's a requirement for the architect to give a copy of the form F to the owner. Okay. Then um, under section seven of HDA, Housing Development Act, uh, it states that the developer must inform the controller of the vacant possession delivery to the first purchaser within 21 days. Uh, they must inform in writing to the surat bahawa serah milikan kosong telah disempurnakan. Now, what about this one, the last one, uh, defect liability period. Defect liability period um, runs okay, uh, upon the uh, delivery of vacant possession. That's why this is part of this lecture. Uh, because once vacant possession telah diberi, telah diserahkan, uh, once you have delivered vacant possession, that's when time starts to, the clock starts ticking. Uh, the clock for the warranty of the new building starts ticking. Uh. Dia, dia mula berbunyi, dia mula apa, um, uh, countdown, countdown, okay, from the date of the vacant possession. Dari uh, mana dia menerima kunci itu. This um, defect liability period, is provided under clause 26 uh, of the Schedule G and also, uh, also clause 30 of Schedule H. Okay. What is it? It's a period within 24 months after the delivery of vacant possession in which the purchaser may notify the vendor, the vendor in writing about the defect and the vendor shall repair and make good the defect. Uh, so other two, two, two things must happen there. Huh? One, the the purchaser must notify in writing. They must bagi satu notice bertulis. Eh? Must notify in writing um, that there's a defect, and I require you, the vendor, to come and fix, to come and make good. It can be fix or make good lah. Memperbetulkan um, ataupun memulihkan. Huh? Kalau tak ada, ada kan? That is make good. Huh? Sebab sometimes the 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 defect too is not because of retak ke apa. Sometimes, sometimes something is missing kan. So you minta developer come, come in to make good. Betul kan? Buat, buat benda yang tak ada tu. Okay. So, it's 24 months huh, after the delivery of vacant possession. Okay. And what must be done? First of all, it must come from the purchaser. Notice in writing. A written notice. It must come from the purchaser. Uh, purchaser, yes to the vendor. Vendor tu mesti diberitahu barulah ada uh, there's a requirement for action. Uh, without notice, uh, the purchaser cannot say that oh ini rosak, ini rosak and then you complain. No. You must notify in writing yeah, to the vendor. And also to do what? For what? To make good or to repair uh, the uh, defect. So what's the definition of defect? Defect includes defect, kerosakan, shrinkage, yang uh, whatever you should have gotten bigger, you get smaller. Shrinkage or other faults in the building or parcel. Apa-apa bentuk uh, faults lah, apa yang tak betul. Uh, faults in the building or parcel due to, uh, mesti boleh, the, the, the defect must be linked to defective workmanship or materials, or the building not constructed according to the approved plans and descriptions. Ah, so that's the catch lah. Huh? The defect, if it's a normal wear and tear, normal wear and tear could be a bit hard huh, to claim. But uh, if you, if the purchaser can uh, show, normally this is normal. Huh? If you go to a new, newly completed, completed house, sometimes you get things like broken tiles. Huh? Like uh, paints, uh, not uh, not sorry, the walls not painted right. Okay, maybe um, other things lah. Uh, maybe the, the 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 door the door won't close, won't shut properly, kan? Uh, because of uh, itu, salah size ke, you know the door jam, the door frame and the door itself uh, not being um, prepared, uh, not being um, constructed constructed, what do you call that? Prepared lah kan? Uh, dia diketam. You have to uh, shave some uh, apa nama tu? Some some 
part so not parts like a few inches and not in millimeters of the door sometimes eh? because it's stuck if you come to my room you look you know what i mean sometimes you have to really bang the, you have to really pull the door and eh, to make it close eh? because of the fact that sometimes the the measurement to the door frame and the door itself um it's not perfect again eh? so you must create some kind of space eh? in terms of what like a tongue shift shift some uh, millimeters off eh? to, to to make the door uh, fit perfectly anyway so that's why why you you um, notify the vendor or the the developer to come in see the this this all uh, sorry see uh, come and see all these defects that i have marked uh, in the complaint form normally there's a standard form uh, together with the keys okay normally there's a standard form given by the um the developer a standard one you go and you do a checklist it's like a checklist leaving is there any complaints um uh, kitchen is there any complaints bathroom one bathroom two and so on and you are uh, and um the the purchaser can attach also any photos any proofs that there are defects huh, in the new uh, unit for instance like i said just now cracked tiles huh, broken tiles you know um um poor Pain jobs, huh? uh, what else are the normal problem? Poor pain jobs, um, some minor cracks on the wall sometimes like, because plastering is not done well. Okay? Uh, so those kind of things huh? you can mark and then you can uh, complain huh, to the um, vendor. Okay. Um, so, 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 sorry. Uh, the the factors that contributed to that contribute to the defects must be one defective workmanship or materials. Two, the building not constructed according to the approved plans and descriptions. I have to prove that. So the vendor is required to repair or make good the defect at its own cost and expenses. So can the vendor cannot deduct, cannot um, charge uh, the purchaser. They must make good ataupun repair the defect dengan duit sendiri dengan belanja sendiri ya huh? with uh, at its own cost and expenses there's a time period within 30 days of receiving the notice if not repaired within 30 days the purchaser may one deduct the cost from the sum being held by the vendor solicitor as stakeholder remember the one the uh, third schedule that i showed you just now 2.5 percent at the end at the very end 5% will be retained by the vendor solicitor. 2.5% will only be released, okay, after six months, kan? Then the remainder will be released after, it says that 18 months uh, of the, um, of the, what do you call it, of the vacant possession delivery. Uh, so the, the, re, the balance to uh, deduct from the, from the balance, uh, the 5% balance. Or, File a claim against the vendor from homeowners claims tribunal. So this is what we were going to learn in our next lecture. Uh, uh, one about the homeowners claims. Home, it's not homeowners. It's home buyers claims tribunal. Okay, uh, and also how? Okay, what is it? How to file a claim? Okay, what kind of claims can be made? So prior to 2002, house buyers can only claim against developers in court, uh, in the court, uh, which uh, was costly and also time consuming for the house buyers. And sometimes the claim amounts uh, um, are too insignificant and uh, sometimes can be quite insignificant that uh, claiming in court uh, may not be worth it or uh, may not be worthwhile for the house buyers. Yes, but they didn't have any other um, alternatives then uh, before 2002 so uh, there were cases whereby house buyers were not able to seek um, uh, uh, seek any um, any damages uh, seek damages against any losses that they suffered or uh, any uh, anything regarding their asset purchase agreement that was not fulfilled by the developer uh, so at that time uh, there was no other recourse than going to the high court so the government felt that something has to be done okay, to further enhance uh, the interest of house buyers. And in 2002, the Housing Development Act was amended okay, to establish the Tribunal for Home Buyers Claims. Okay. As we know, a tribunal is an alternative dispute resolution mechanism. So meaning that if there are disputes uh, between parties, besides going to court, that 
is an alternative way uh, to resolve the conflict or, or the dispute. So in this particular case, uh, the disputes between the developer and also the house buyer is being settled at the tribunal for home buyers claims, HCP, instead of going to court, uh, which is the uh, the the what called the uh, the uh, the situation before the introduction of HCT in two thousand and two. Okay, so the Malay uh, translation or the Malay title of the tribunal is Tribunal Tuntutan Pembeli Rumah. So it's not Tribunal Pembeli Rumah yeah? It's a Tribunal of the Tuntutan of the claims. Tribunal Tuntutan Pembeli Rumah or TTPR. To hear grievances, grievances ni claims lah ataupun complaints lah, ah, grievances, masalah, okay, permasalahan. To hear grievances of house buyers with claims related to their house. Okay, so who is the party? Who is the claimant here? Siapa kah orang yang buat claim tu yang file claim tu? If you say that it's to hear grievances of house buyers, it must be the house buyers ah, who are the claimants uh, yang file kind the claim at the tribunal. Okay, so uh, the amendment was made, uh, uh, part 6 was added to Housing Development Act which was uh, sections which was uh, which comprised sections 16A to 16AI. Okay, and then um, also there's a new, uh, together with that, a new regulations uh, were uh, passed which was the Housing Development Regulations Tribunal for Home Buyers Claims 2002 and within the regulations, uh, it contains procedural and administrative matters. So more detailed than the Act itself and than the Housing Development Act itself. Uh, all the details on the procedure, uh, on the uh, administrative matters pertaining to house buyers claims uh, at the tribunal. And uh, um, as we as what we have learned before under our strata law, okay, in 2003 the strata management tribunal was established. Okay, since the tribunal for home buyers claims and tribunal for strata management uh, uh, were, uh, are under the same ministry, which is the Ministry of Housing and Local Government. Okay, what happened was in 2003 with the with the establishment of the strata management tribunal. The two, tri the two tribunals are put under the same office uh, for management, uh, for administrative purpose. Okay, so the full name, uh, the full name or the full title of the strata uh, of the housing tribunal plus the strata tri tribunal is the housing and strata management tribunal. So that is the name of the office. Uh, but still, okay, uh, in this lecture we are just going to discuss the part on the home bias claims tribunal saja. So meaning the department the atas tu, the pengurusan is under the Office of Housing and Strata Management Tribunal tetapi mahkamah hanya but the tribunal itself is the home bias claims tribunal. Hope you understand. Okay, now the rights to go to tribunal is given, okay, uh, besides being spelled out uh, in the uh, in the Housing Development Act itself, in the sections, uh, also under Schedule G and Schedule H, okay, uh, there are uh, apa nama tu, clauses that allows house buyers to file and maintain a claim. Not only file but also maintain, uh, meneruskan lah, filing dan meneruskan satu claim, claim in any tribunal including home buyers claims tribunal. Uh. So, maknanya this is part of the contract uh, between the house buyer and also the developer. So, house buyers are allowed under the sale and purchase agreement uh, to file a claim against a developer and also to maintain that claim. Okay? So, it says there under clause 7, purchaser's right to initiate and maintain action. The purchaser shall be entitled on his own volition, sendirilah tanpa paksaan, in his own name to initiate, commence, institute and maintain in any court or tribunal an action, suit or proceeding against the vendor or any other person in respect of any matter arising out of this agreement. Uh, so ini lah yang nak claim tu. Anything, any matter, any issues from uh, that, that uh, uh, any matters result that result from the agreement. Uh, sebarang uh, terms yang tidak dipenuhi, for instance, uh, any any uh, terms that are broken, uh, any breach of the uh, the clauses. Okay? Unless a contrary intention is expressed in any agreement, assignment or, char uh, or charge. Sebenarnya diberikan 
uh, apa nombor tu the, the, the purchaser is given is allowed under the sale purchase agreement to file the claim at a claim at the um, house buyers ha, uh, home buyers claim tribunal now the jurisdiction okay now when we are talking about jurisdiction bidang kuasa okay we um, under house buyer home buyers claims tribunal we can divide the jurisdiction into three so the first the first one is time jurisdiction the second one is amount jurisdiction the third one is claim jurisdiction or claim type lah the type of jurisdiction tu ah the claim tu sendiri jenisnya Uh, but before that, we need to define home buyer under um, under the regulations, eh? what, and also under the Act. Uh, apa maksud? What maksud? The upper definition. What who are who are the home buyers that are allowed to claim to file a claim at the tribunal? So here, home buyer is defined as purchaser from developer. So that is what we understand all this while, all this while, right? Okay, what what has been understood uh, by us. When you purchase from a developer, you are a home buyer. But also look at the second one, second part of the definition, or subsequent purchaser. That is the second purchaser from first buyer of the housing accommodation. So that means that if there is a sub sale huh, from the first buyer to the second buyer, in and there is a claim in, uh, arising from the uh, sale and purchase agreement, uh, for instance, uh, defects. Yang yang tak dibaiki, yang defects not repaired uh, within the defect liability period, the second purchaser can claim against the developer. So now it's essentially a house buyer claiming against a developer. But the definition of um, house buyer or home buyer tu is not just the first house buyer, but also when the house buyer um, sells his property to a second. Uh, Party, okay, during the defect liability period, for instance, kan? so the second purchaser is afforded the same um, apa nama tu, um, protection, uh, uh, with the same rights lah, uh, under the defect liability period against the developer. Now, as per section 16N, okay, dalam um, HDA, under HDA, when, I, when we talk about sections, dia, I'm referring to the Housing Development Act and no more regulations. I'm talking about the HDA. Section 16N, claim must be filed no later than 12 months from the date of CCC issuance or the expiry of the defect liability period or the termination of the sale and purchase agreement. So no later, tak lebih daripada 12 bulan. So any date yang earlier, any earlier date. Huh? So you, the, the ball starts rolling, okay? Yeah, actually, yeah, the ball starts rolling from the CCC because normally CCC is a prerequisite for vacant possession. Vacant possession is when the ball starts rolling for the defect liability period. I remember our talk last week about our, our lecture on the defect liability, uh, liability period, huh? whereby it's um, 24 months, kan? Okay, 18, uh, 24 months. 24 months after the date of the vacant possession. Uh, so, the conditions for vacant possession is CCC has been issued. Kan? Uh, so, whichever is earlier. Uh, is it the, uh, the, the date of 12 months after the date of the CCC issuance or is it 12 months at the expiry of the defect liability period? Mana yang uh, terdahulu? No later than. Uh, no later than or the termination of sale and purchase. Okay? Sale and purchase can be terminated now. Before, there's no uh, provision uh, under the uh, Housing Development Act uh, for the house buyer to terminate the sale and purchase agreement. But now, under such certain circumstances, the house buyer can um, apply okay, for the sale and purchase agreement to be terminated, but must be very special circumstances. Right? This um, clause of termination cannot be done lightly. Cannot, tak boleh, uh, apa, sesuka hati. Contohnya, bank loan tak dapat nak buat loan, uh, ataupun you you, uh, you don't feel that you want to proceed the loan with bank A, you want to go to bank B, that's why you want to uh, cancel your sale and purchase agreement. No, huh? must be very valid reasons that, uh, that you can terminate your sale and purchase agreement. The limits of claims, is 50,000 
Uh, so uh, sorry, the the um, explanation just now refers to time jurisdiction masa. Uh, dia, dia ada satu tempo masa bidang kuasa masa dia. After this 12 months uh, from the CCC or expiry of defect liability period or termination of SMP, mana yang dah terdahulu, whichever is earlier. Uh, after that time period, the tribunal has no jurisdiction to hear or to accept any claims. Dah habis. Uh, there is a certain time jurisdiction uh, for the tribunal to hear the claim. Okay, so time jurisdiction, syaratnya either one yang mana terdahulu, whichever is earlier. The second jurisdiction is amount, okay, which is the limit of claims is 50,000 ringgit. Huh? That is the house by home buyers claims tribunal cannot give monetary award on individual or combined claims of more than 50,000 ringgit. Uh, so that is the limit to the amount limit. Huh? So jurisdiction ni boleh kata limit lah. Uh, so they cannot hear anything, any, any claims above 50,000. So what happens then? If that is the limit huh, for all this kind of time jurisdiction, amount and also the types of claims punya apa, jurisdiction, where else can the house buyer go besides the tribunal? Of course you go to the higher one, to the, to the high court lah. Huh? Land matters kan? Okay, betul lah. Okay. Um, or if, it, if it's regarding sale and purchase agreement, contract, you go to sessions lah. Sessions court. Even lower than higher high court sebenarnya. If it's related to the contract itself. Okay. Now, uh, claims must be filed no later than 12 madah. Okay, the second one, 50. I said just now, either the, uh, the claim... Um, uh, the award cannot give monetary award on on individual or combined claims unless kecuali so the time jurisdiction was given under section 16m cannot be more than 50000 unless uh, section 16o says unless both parties have a written agreement that the tribunal can hear claims of more than 50000 ringgit so the written agreement must be made before lah prior to that uh, yeah, before the um sorry before the um the, the issue uh, arises lah and uh, not when the issue arises then decide uh, but both unless both parties have a written agreement no 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 that's not it doesn't say uh, so at any point uh, when both parties agree in writing uh, that any claims above 50000 ringgit can be heard at the uh, at the tribunal then 16o allows that to occur now, what about the claim jurisdiction, which is technical and non-technical claims related to houses, to new houses, to houses lah, bukan new, ayalah new houses within the defect liability period, yeah. Now, types, okay, we have technical claims, types of claims, and we have non-technical claims. Now, according to section 16L, a house buyer may claim at tribunal for any loss, sebarang kerugian, eh? loss suffered, or any matter concerning his interest as a home buyer under his under this act. Uh, so inilah types of claims too. Huh? Uh, is apa nama tu? Is uh, the type of claim, the types of claims huh? uh, provided broadly or generally under section 16L. Dikata mana-mana saja any losses or any loss suffered, any matter concerning his interest as a home buyer under uh, the HDA. Okay. So if this if that's the case, maknanya any loss ni can be monetary and also non-monetary kan? Uh, so what is the non-monetary punya claims tu? Uh, maybe to ask for developer to apa nama tu to uh, undertake uh, any um, any apa nama tu actions repairs ke? Okay. So what are the technical claims? One defects in workmanship. Uh, this is very clear. If there's any um, any apa nama, defects uh, in the house or in the new house whereby um, the uh, developer refuse, refuses to, um, to make correct uh, or to make right, then the house buyer can claim uh, for the defects in workmanship at the tribunal, can claim the cost lah, uh, maybe the, the, uh, the house buyer, okay, a fix, uh, repair, can repair first the defects and then uh, using the uh, invoice, uh, using the receipt can claim the cost at the tribunal. Second one, 
non-compliance of approved plans and specifications by developers or any omissions or any deviations from the sale and purchase agreement. For instance, um, types of finishes are different. Uh, specification, we're talking about specification type of finishes, floor finishes. And in the sale and purchase agreement, it's stated a uh, marble. Marble, right? Uh, but in the uh, finished house, it is just tiles. Uh, so you can claim uh, for the, the difference in value to between marble and tiles. Okay? Uh, approved plans, uh, uh, so, uh, the dimensions of the building, for instance, the dimensions of the rooms, uh, as per the sale and purchase agreements, has, uh, when not delivered by the developer, can be claimed. Yeah? They are considered uh, gloss, they are considered lain, uh, so they are lain daripada sale and purchase agreement as agreed. Uh, the contract has been, has been um, uh, agreed by both parties. So we say any omission, any deviation. Also, sometimes, uh, the developer uh, in the sale and purchase agreement, okay, maybe uh, promise certain um, amenities or certain facilities uh, for the for the house uh, comes together coming together with the house. Okay, then uh, the developer does not provide. So this is omission, omit, omission. Uh, omission maknanya tak buat. Deviation means menyimpang, lari, uh, menyimpang daripada the promised or, or the uh, plans and specifications, okay, non-compliance, maknanya tak buat according to the plans huh? or specifications. The third one, uh, under technical claims, refusing or neglecting to remedy defects, shrinkage or other faults to the building, okay, sama juga macam tadi, uh, defects tadi, dah, uh, apa, berlakunya, uh, apa nama tu, kecacatan bangunan and then find, and then refuse to, to remedy pula defects to, uh, then maybe there's shrinkage in the building or any faults uh, yang perlu dibaiki that the developer needs to repair and address uh, he didn't do he doesn't do then maybe claim incomplete or non availability of common facilities uh, this one maybe the developer in the sale purchase agreement stated that this uh, particular unit uh, um, strata normally uh, comes together with um, for instance, uh, common facilities with um, with what example um, common area gardens, for instance, uh, maybe at the rooftop garden, uh, maybe there's um, hanging gardens, vertical gardens or whatever. Uh, then not provided, not being provided, or gyms, uh, common facilities, gymnasium, uh, swimming, swimming pool are uh, not being completed. Yeah. So in part or whole, maknanya tak siap semua ataupun tak siap separuh. So in this particular case, the not the incomplete or non-availability of common facilities is not the swimming pool, the wading pool, the gym, uh, whatever uh, common facilities not being provided as per se purchase agreement, then the purchaser can claim in the um, HCT, the Home Buyers Claims Tribunal. Next one is compensation for adjustment in land area as compared to the measurement in this SPA. So maybe the uh, purchaser received uh, his title, then he checked against the sale purchase agreement, uh, uh, then he, um, he discovered that the land area is smaller uh, than the sale purchase agreement, which, what they agreed before in the sale and purchase agreement. Could this happen? Yes, it could happen, okay, especially with new developments, okay, whereby uh, you have, uh, for instance, in the sale and purchase agreement, you have a lot which has not been surveyed yet. So you have a provisional title uh, in the sale and purchase agreement. But uh, when you receive your house, the final title has been issued, the, the lot has been surveyed, ukur halus, uh, sudah ukur halus. So what happens is there may be a difference in the land area, okay, whereby the provisional land area may be uh, bigger than the actual the surveyed land area. The surveyed land area is smaller than the provisional land area, then uh, the purchaser can claim uh, for the difference in um, in, apa nama tu, in tribunal. Now, what about non-technical claims? Okay, non-technical claim has not to, uh, apa nama, uh, claims that has, um, that got, uh, that is not related to construction lah, uh, not related to the construction, okay? Okay, we are talking on all the physical building itself. Okay, now we're talking about delays, for instance, delay in handing over of the vacant possession, uh, the late delivery just now. If there's late delivery, then what did we learn uh, before? Uh, the developer, uh, sorry, the house buyer uh, is eligible to claim for LAD, uh, claim LAD, which is 
10% uh, day to day per 10% per annum uh, to be calculated day to day okay so the uh, the delay tu can be uh, uh, sorry the the the, uh, the amount that that the developer must pay uh, due to the delay can be calculated outright uh, using the formula uh. it's based on what okay. besides the 10% besides the day to day besides the per annum tu is based on the purchase price then claim for refund or deposit uh, say there's a termination of sale purchase agreement and the developer refuses to refund uh, the deposit then the house buyer can claim in the um, in the tribunal now this is the procedure now if you look at this procedure it looks like a simple flow chart right a simple chart from form one form two until the tribunal award actually if you refer back to to your strata management tribunal uh, the more complicated one uh, that shows the the different processes if there's negotiation if there's a, uh, a successful ne negotiation and successful successful negotiation the, uh, it's the same actually uh, but this has been sim simplified uh, into uh, the claim the counterclaim the hearing and also the award same thing actually the negotiation occurs here if there's a ground there's grounds for uh, negotiation the secretariat feels that they can um, they can push for negotiation it's here before the hearing itself huh? before hearing okay the, the secretariat may call the two parties together uh, to, ne to negotiate lah, uh, before going to the hearing itself okay now Going back to our uh, house, uh, uh, home buyers claims tribunal, it begins with filing a claim in form one, borang satu, this one on the right, uh, borang satu, okay. So it says here, penyataan tuntutan, claim, claim statement. Huh? Claim statement in the tribunal, uh, in the home buyers claims tribunal, where? Di mana, di negeri mana. So, if you go to the website, uh, the KPKT website, the Ministry of Housing and Local Government, you will discover that there is, um, sorry, the tribunals are located in Putrajaya, Zone Utara, the North, the South and the East. I'm not talking East Malaysia, bukan Sabah Sarawak, I'm talking about East to Pantai Timur, Malaysia, uh, Kelantan Terengganu tu. So you have one, two, three, four zones. Okay, four zones and the four zones you have ten um apa nama tu mahkamah ten tribunals lah yang bersidang lah huh? because in KL okay they they apa nama tu they provided extra um apa uh, extra um extra court rooms uh, boleh kata tak cakap macam tu extra rooms uh, extra rooms uh, extra tribunal rooms uh, because there are more cases uh, in the central region tu in the KL area in Putrajaya yeah, yeah. okay so you have utara uh, north south um timor east and then you have more in the central region so okay now um tribunal where negeri mana tuntutan number okay so dekat sini uh, dia akan diisi will be uh, completed by the officer at the tribunal during the registration so don't worry about this uh, you have just have to uh, put in your name and also the um, developer's address and name as well okay now so after you have filed in four copies then ringgit i think uh, the 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 fee that you have to pay so, so cheap uh, then ringgit then uh, the respondent if they have any counterclaims or they have any defense they will file okay form two borang dua same this is the same as the strata management tribunal you go back you see a more uh, detail punya uh, diagram uh, that, that will, can be copied uh, for the uh, home buyers claims tribunal sama it's just the the apa nama tu the form punya tajuk saja lain uh, the, the, the title so here it says in tribunal tuntutan pembeli rumah but that one is tribunal uh, pengurusan strata okay so all the forms are in malay uh, if you go to uh, what tuntutan later on if you buy a house and then you feel uh, you you have claims uh, against the developer you can do it yourself okay the the forms can be a uh, form one lah this ya borang satu the form one can be downloaded from this website okay website okay so if there's any uh, defense or counterclaim from the developer uh, the developer will file form two borang dua then after that okay after that uh, through form four so, uh, when um, when the secretary feels that it should go to hearing, uh, 
negotiation before this kan uh, so in the case of there's no room for negotiation okay they will go to the uh, tribunal hearing itself get okay, the tribunal hearing sorry for the tribunal hearing both claimants and respondents uh, will be notified through form 4 borang 4 uh, at least 14 days sebelum the hearing date Tribunal mesti dihantar melalui registered letter lah uh, to make sure that the uh, notice for the hearing reaches both parties, uh, the claimants and respondents. What if the respondents do not appear on the day of hearing? Ah, uh, that is interesting. Now, that's a provision, okay, uh, under Housing Development Act, uh, one of the 16s lah, uh, dalam 16 tu yang mengatakan that, say, that states that the tribunal may, boleh, may, um, give out a decision. Uh, maknanya tanpa kehadiran ex parte, tanpa kehadiran without the uh, presence of the claimants and also the respondents on the date of hearing. Okay. May, boleh, boleh. Bukan mesti, boleh. Meluarkan satu um, keputusan. Okay. Then, okay, uh, keputusan. Then the notice to the, the award, the official award, okay will be um, issued within 60 days. Mesti dikeluarkan 60 days of hearing. Okay. But according to the Ministry of Housing and Local Government website, okay, uh, the, dipanggil apa tu? Uh, uh, the, uh, kat, uh, apa dipanggil? Pl bukan pelagiat. What they promised the, um, their, their, their clients lah, uh, the clients chapter lah, they promise to issue the tribunal award within 14 days of the hearing, uh, to promise there. But under law, it's 60 days, 60 hari. Now, awards, what about the awards, okay? What's, what is it actually that we said just now, the award can, tribunal award, what is this? What, what kind of um, decisions can be made? What kind of things that can be given? things that it or uh, yeah thing apa benda yang boleh diberikan one that a party to the proceedings pay money to any other party like monetary huh? dibayar huh? monetary pay money to any other party the second one that the price or other consideration paid by the home buyer or any other person to be refunded to the home buyer or that person so ini the, the second one is um, refund okay the first one is pay money ada uh, risiko damages lah dari segi ganti rugi just now dari segi uh, claims just now, tuntutan just now, uh, bukan damage, bukan damage award, award different lah, lain, damage when you go to court, okay, award ni, satu award lah, uh, yang diberikan dalam tribunal. Then, the second one, like I said just now, refund of the price or other consideration means the deposit lah, could be uh, price or deposit, uh, must be refunded, uh, kedua is refund, the third one is interest, okay, uh, interest, the uh, kadar faedah, interest, to be paid on any sum or monetary award at a rate not exceeding 8% per annum. Uh, so, uh, the tribunal's award just now, the, the money can be plus interest, which is not exceeding 8% per annum. Okay? Unless it has been otherwise agreed between the parties. They, they say, okay, if, uh, uh, apa? to punish the other party, they, both parties have agreed from the uh, onset, they want to give uh, more, uh, the interest. Uh, uh, as a punitive punya measure, 10%. Then that, uh, since both parties have agreed, then um, the the tribunal may uh, uh, enforce or may impose a, a higher interest on the party yang kena bayar tu. Now tribunal hearing. What about the hearing itself? Just now the claims kan? Uh, sorry, the filing of the claims. Uh, the award. What about the hearing? Notice of date, time and place shall be served for claimant and respondent to appear at the hearing. Okay, 14 days before the date of the hearing. Okay, the notice must be served. In the notice itself, there must be uh, the date, the time, the place. Uh, that's the use of the notice to memberitahu what's the purpose of this notice. Uh, there must be the time, the date, the venue. Okay, uh, for the for both parties to be able to uh, to, to to be present on that day. See, okay? the notice is uh, is provided and the notice requirement is as per section 16s both parties have the right to attend and be heard at the hearing self-represented unless the tribunal feels that representation from a lawyer is necessary okay so the general rule is both parties go there on their own represent their own selves speak for themselves huh? unless huh? 
the matter at hand is so complicated it, it, apa nama maybe it involves some points of law ha, that the party maybe the claimants especially the the house buyer they are not they don't have the legal uh, knowledge ha, so they feel that they are not equipped to speak for themselves on that day they may uh, get a lawyer friend ke ataupun they may employ a lawyer ke to speak on their behalf but before that they must get a leave they must get leave they must dapat permission from the tribunal uh, and, and then if the tribunal feels that representation from lawyer is necessary they may allow uh, for the party any party to be represented by a lawyer but normally tribunal is a less formal setting a less apa nama tu um, adversarial dia bukan melawan uh, dia macam nak jadi orang tengah mediation media is it's a mediating punya Uh, punya forum uh, bukan melawan bukan nak argue sangat uh, bukan nak argue nak dengar saja kan uh, just to hear not to argue so that's why the tribunal doesn't encourage legal representation uh, tak perlulah ada lawyer you yourself speak uh, for yourself uh, tell us your uh, claim tell us the, de the details the other party tell us your counter claim tell us your defense and then uh, they will decide this decide later on within the 60 days they will Um, issue their award. Okay, this is under section 16U that's, that stated that uh, self-representation unless uh, the tribunal allows. Lah. Tribunal will make an award within 60 days of the hearing date in the form of money payment and return and the observation or set aside any of the same system. Uh, so in the form of money, do it in the form of return of refund uh, of deposit and also pematuhan observation or setting aside ataupun diketepikan any of the sale and purchase terms lah, any claims by the uh, house buyer just now that's under section 16U now the last one the tribunal's award is final and the failure to comply can incur a fine of not less than 5,000 ringgit but not more than 10,000 bring it or a jail sentence of not more than two years or both why is this provision uh, added uh, or why do we have this provision uh? this is to give teeth uh, to the uh, tribunal's power if the tribunal has the power to just award uh, without enforcing the award then the developer will not be uh, scared uh, to go against the award of tribunal So that's why there is a, an enforcement punya clause whereby if there's any um, breach or not non-compliance of the tribunal's award, okay, it may lead to fine, a fine, and also a, a fine, okay, uh, a jail sentence or both. Kedua-duanya nak bagi teeth, want to give extra power huh, to the court of the tribunal. So this is also another. Um, a practical step uh, taken by the tribunal to enforce, uh, to give um, effect to its award, uh, to make sure that the party that has to pay, pay. Uh, if they have to pay, they pay. If they have to do something, they do that whatever has uh, is required by the tribunal. Now, any complaints of non-compliance of tribunal's award are to be made by the purchasers, uh, the claimants just now, to the enforcement division of the Ministry of Housing and Local Government. So this is outside the tribunal. Ini bukan, this is not the power of the tribunal itself. This is the power of ministry. This is what the ministry does okay, uh, as, a, as a further as, uh, enforcement step uh, uh, against the, besides the, this one, besides the fine, besides the jail or both just now, uh, the powers given to the tribunal. Um, the ministry itself, what they do is if there's any complaints and they check the complaints and they discover that yes the award has not been um apa nama tu, uh, not not been followed uh, by the developer the developer firms which did not comply will be blacklisted uh, what will happen they will not be able to operate lah uh, they will not be able to continue with their development activities that tak boleh jadi developer because it's not only their names that are blacklisted but also the board of directors uh, unless they name other proxies lah, other people as proxies uh, to their firm then essentially what this means is the developing company developer company and also their bod will be blacklisted uh, so this means no business lah for them uh, so this is a further um, step of further action uh, that Ministry of Housing and Local Government has taken yeah, 
to give more power, to give more support right, to the tribunal. Now, reference to court. Reference to court, the tribunal here, it says under section 16Z, tribunal can refer to high court a question of law before making its award. Ha, sebelum buat award, sebelum keluarkan award tadi, the, the tribunal can refer. Bolehlah bertanya. Bolehlah make a reference. Ha. Boleh pergi ke high court dan bertanya mengenai any question of law that arose during the proceeding. Tiba-tiba ada satu fakta yang berkaitan dengan undang-undang that the tribunal has a uh, feel that they do not have the capacity ya uh, to, to to putuskan to decide or to act upon ha uh, sebab dia takut bukan takutlah sebab dia khuatir ha uh, they are they are worried that if they make a decision based on a unresolved question of law that particular decision may be challenged later on so rather than letting their decision to be challenged what they do is before deciding before making an award they refer that question of law to the high court okay uh, uh, and that particular question of law must be of sufficient merit mestilah satu yang significant lah uh, significant enough to be referred to um, the high court so the tribunal chairman or tribunal deputy chairman or siapa saja or whoever representative from the tribunal sitting on the tribunal on that day okay will uh, use his own judgment uh, whether this has uh, the, the question of law has sufficient merit to be um, referred to high court if he feels that it has sufficient merit okay, then he will make the reference to court. if a reference under this section uh, section 16z is made the tribunal is bound by high court decision. Uh, sekiranya dah tanya court, court dah come back with the uh, answer, they, the tribunal then must use the answer as part of their consideration. Must make its award uh, according to the decision of the high court uh, regarding the question of law. 